let's make some web requests today. So probably the way you're the most familiar with doing this is typing into your web browser some URL, hitting enter, and what do you know, a nice website pops up. Well, how does this work under the hood? And how it works under the hood, probably as you're expecting, having watched the videos in this lecture series, is HTTP. Our browser is sending HTTP on our behalf. And one way we can see this is by using this web server I have started here on the right side of my screen and going to the a website that that server is listening on. So I've got it listening on IP address 127.0.0.1, port 80. I type this into my browser. We hit visit and look what shows up in my web server on the right here. We've got an HTTP request. We've got get slash HTTP 1.1 host 127.0.0.1, whole bunch of other headers. And what I could do is I can actually respond to this HTTP request by hand. I can type HTTP 1.0 200 OK, valid HTTP response here. And I'm actually going to go ahead and let the client know that I am going to give it some HTML. So I'm going to say content type text HTML. And then I'm going to send it some HTML. I'll say hello uh, world. And we'll make it a nice bolded world. We do that and look what shows up in the browser. We've got this nice HTML rendered in the browser uh, because the browser just made an HTTP request. It made this request and we sent a reply. And that's really how the web works. Every day when you use the web and you go to various websites, it's making an HTTP request. The server, probably there isn't a person, you know, typing the response by hand. Probably it's a program that's actually uh, automatically responding to this request. But you know what? You could staff a data center with uh, millions of people just rapidly typing responses if you really wanted to. It's just a language and the browser knows how to speak it and other programs know how to speak it. So for example, if I start up yet another terminal, we will see another way of making a web request. So, you know, you're used to the browser, but what if I want to do this in a kind of command line oriented way? Is there a nice command line program for making a web request? And it turns out that the answer is absolutely yes. Let me move the browser here a little bit over here, there, there. Okay. Uh, the way that we can make a web request it, from the terminal is using the curl program. So the curl program just takes a URL, just like our web browser takes a URL, um, and it makes an HTTP request. So let's see if I do curl, uh, yeah, let's actually do example.com. If I go curl example.com, we'll see that I actually get just the raw uh, HTML response, right? I get this nice uh, example domain. This domain is for use in illustrative examples. Alternatively, if I go to my nice web server here that I have on the right at 127.0.0.1 <clears throat> and I curl that, well, look what comes through. Get slash HTTP 1.1 host 127.0.0.1. In this case, curl is instructing us that it is the user agent known as curl. Whereas, you know, Firefox was saying it is the user agent Mozilla and, you know, Firefox over here. And so again, we could send some sort of reply. Maybe we'll say um, HTTP 1.0200 OK. And what should I say? I'll say, uh, I'll say hello world. And look what shows up, hello world. And we can end that connection here and the response has come back. So I can curl to example.com. I can curl to this server here that, you know, I'm manually operating here on the right. Um, <clears throat> and I can interact with this, these web applications in various ways. So for example, I might want to make a post request to this web server here on the right. And the way that I actually do that is I do curl dash X post and we'll see what comes through. Well, a post request comes through and I could, of course, you know, respond. In this case, I'm going to send an empty response uh, to not actually reply to this to keep it nice and simple. But we'll see that dash capital X post sends a post request. Now you might be wondering, how do I know that, right? I just kind of pulled this from thin air that I can use dash capital X post to send a post request. The reason I know that is because I have read, at least in part, uh, the man page for curl. The man page for curl is going to explain all of this. It's going to explain all of the options 
available in the curl program. And for example, if I search for dash capital X, we'll see that somewhere in here, it talks about this dash X option. And this dash, dash X option, for example, talks about how you can use dash X space head to send a, uh, a head request. Um, or, you know, there's also verbs like put and delete that we didn't talk about. In this case, I did a post by default. It says which defaults to get. Uh, we can customize this. And there's a whole bunch of different options. So, for example, you know, I'll show off another one. Uh, I might decide that I want to set a custom header. So maybe I'll do a post request and I want to say, you know what, we're not the user agent curl. I am the user agent. Connor and look what comes through user agent Connor so this is super cool uh, the curl uh, command allows us to do all sorts of different HTTP requests uh, in the same way that our browser actually allows us to do all sorts of HTTP requests it's just uh, in this case it's in response to different arguments being passed to curl in this case it's actually in response to different ways you interact with the web application, right? When you click on a button, it might do this particular thing. If you type in some fields and then hit the submit button, it might do a post request. It kind of depends on how the HTML within that website dictates what the browser should do. In this case, it's our command line arguments that dictate. And the way that we know how to kind of drive this curl program is again, it's reading the man page. I want to make it very clear that in your computer science career, one of the most important skills is learning how to become familiar with the unfamiliar. And the way you do that is you read documentation. So the curl command is very nicely documented. So uh, you might not be so fortunate to be, you know, running your own little web server here on the side. Let's pretend maybe we don't have this. You might wonder, you know, what request was made here by this curl command? This is a very uh, natural question that might arise throughout uh, interacting with the web. I'm like, hey, what, what just actually happened here? What is that HTTP request I just sent? Well, what I can do is I can use the dash V option. And in this case, I'm not going to talk to 127001 because we just got rid of that server. Let's talk to example.com. And we'll see again, we get our, our response we're used to, but we actually get some more stuff now. Now we also get uh, all of the HTTP response, all of the raw headers come through when I, we use that dash V option. And we can also see what we actually sent, right? So it does exactly what we saw before. It's a post, we set the user agent and so on. Okay, so now we've used a web browser, we've used curl. Um, how else might I interact with this remote server? Well, okay, these are two great and very popular ways uh, to interact, but we can just send a raw HTTP request. All that exists right now with this example.com website, right? I go to example.com. This is just a server somewhere out there on the internet that is responding to HTTP requests. It is a networked server. I can use the netcat command to talk directly to this server. So if I use netcat example.com, and in this case, I need to specify the port because there's not just this implicit uh, port 80. Netcat is used to talk to any TCP program out there on the internet. Um, I can uh, talk like uh, FTP or SMTP or SSH, some of these other protocols that we've discussed in the lecture video. Of course, in this case, we're really interested in HTTP. And I know that example.com is a normal behaving HTTP server and it is listening on port 80. So I am going to connect to example.com on port 80. We'll see that we did not get our shell prompt back, right? This program is hanging, it's waiting for input. What it's waiting for is for us to actually type some bytes, send some raw bytes to this server. Right now we have a connection to example.com. We can say get slash HTTP 1.0, uh, and then let's say host example.com, hit enter. We're not done yet, two new lines. Always remember two new lines in order to uh, send this through and out comes our response. So we'll see here, I sent these raw bytes off to this server out there on the internet, and I got HTTP 1.0200 okay, the thing that we're getting very familiar with in this case. I could alternatively go and say I want to give me the test it page, 
and I would like to say, give me HTTP 1.0. Again, we'll say hostexample.com and we'll hit enter. And well, it looks like this website also, uh, well, it gives it the same HTTP response, it seems, uh, HTML response that is, but it does in fact return a 404 not found. So it looks like maybe if we did slash test it to do the equivalent of that, turns out there's a 404 that came back here. Um, that maybe it's not so clear in the browser that we got a different response. Okay, now what else is there to know about interacting with the web? Well, one other popular way, one other popular paradigm of interacting with the web besides, you know, using your web browser, just sending some raw bytes, using the popular terminal uh, way of interacting with the web using curl. Another one is in a programmatic sense. So if I'm in some programming language and I wanna write some cool uh, program that's gonna interact with the web, how do I do that? Well, in this case, this uh, demonstration is going to show off how we might do that in Python, but certainly other languages have other ways of doing it. Ultimately, all you need to do is send these HTTP bytes across the network. Uh, let's go ahead and launch Python. So if I do import request, this is a very popular Python library for interacting with the web, and I do request.get example.com. What, come what comes back is a response object, and this is just a Python object like any other. Uh, if I save this off, I've got my response object, and I could do response.text. And this is actually going to give me <clears throat> the body of the text, and I could print that if I wanted to. Right now, it looks almost like curl. Right, we've got the the raw bytes here of the the body of our HTTP response. I could also uh, go ahead and grab response dot headers. Okay, this is going to be all of my headers, and I could enumerate these headers. So for kv in response headers items. Right, this is just Python. This isn't a request sort of thing. I could do uh, prints. The K and the V separated by a colon. And now we can see we've got all of these headers. Okay, uh, what else might we want to do? Well, maybe we want to write a nice little program that's going to extract all the links from a website, right? If we're in a programmatic sense of interacting with the web, probably we're writing a program to do some sort of cool thing. This is why you might use requests. Let's imagine a simple program that goes and extracts links. So one way that links are conveyed and traditionally conveyed in an HTML context is this anchor tag. This anchor tag right here says this is a link. And so for example, I can click on this link and it brings me to this iana.org slash help slash example domains. That's where I link to. And it, you know, it gives us more things, right? This World Wide Web takes us from one link to the next. Maybe I want to extract all the links from a website. Let's write a program that can do that. So I'm going to take, um, let's say, response equals request dot gets HTTP uh, colon slash slash example dot com. And we've got, oops, forgot to say requests plural request.get, so we've got this response object, I've got this text, and I could split it, or I could split lines this thing using Python, and now I've got every single individual line. So for example, I could grab the zeroth line, I could grab the tenth line, and the tenth line is setting a background color very nicely. Well, what I might wanna do is go for line in this, and let's find every single line that has an anchor tag. So we'll say if, there is a A in the line, in line, we will print line. And look at that, we've grabbed the line that contains the link. Maybe we want to extract this link. The way we might do that is splitting on double quotes, right? If we split on double quotes, this will be the zeroth element, this will be the first element, and this will be the second element. So let's go ahead and do that. For line in response.text.splitlines, and we'll say if there's an A in the line, then we will print line split on quotes, double quotes, and give me the first item. And out comes the link. 
Cool, so this is using Python. Now, I might want to do other things in Python, right? I might not just want to requests.get this thing. I might want to post this thing. And the way that I do that in Python requests is I do request.post. And now, <clears throat> I have sent a post request off to this thing. Alternatively, I might want to set a header. So, for example, I might want to do headers equals user agent Connor. This is the syntax for doing that. Uh, because the post and the get also takes a header argument. Now you might be wondering, again, just like curl, where am I pulling this information from? I'm just like making stuff up, it almost feels like. It's just coming out of nowhere. Documentation. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull up the documentation for requests. And you can read that at request.readthedocs.io. This module is designed to get you comfortable with reading documentation. We have intentionally not told you all of the features of curl necessary to solve this assignment. We have not told you all of the features of Python requests necessary to read this assignment. In fact, I don't even think we've told you all of the features of HTTP necessary to solve this assignment. You're going to read documentation in this assignment. You're going to read about the uh, requests library here at this nice website. You're going to read about curl in the man page for curl. You'll also probably want to pull up RFC 1945 and read through that. Some of these things might be pretty dense technical text, but it is absolutely crucial in your computer science career to get comfortable at getting familiar with the unfamiliar. And the way you do this is you read documentation. None of this stuff is magical. It's just waiting for you to understand it. And the way you understand it is read the documentation.